Persona 5 The Royal is just as much a life simulation game as it is a JRPG. When you aren't exploring palaces and exploiting the lives of criminals, you're going to school, hanging out with friends, building relationships, and playing video games, watching movies, and studying. But what happens when life becomes too much to handle? How do you deal with the emotional trauma that you've suffered from in your life? This is one of the biggest themes that's portrayed in the true ending of Persona 5 Royal, and it's portrayed so well in the music of the final palace. Now, if that wasn't enough evidence that we're going to be talking about some pretty major spoilers, then this is your official spoiler warning. If you do not want to be spoiled about the true ending of Persona 5 Royal, then perhaps you can check out my review of Persona 5 Royal, which I'll put up in the I card in the corner, and I'll put it in the link in the description down below. Why did I say in the link? I don't know. The true ending really tugs at your heartstrings as you realize Dr. Maruki, the counselor that you've spent so much time with in order to build up their confidant, is the owner of a palace in the form of a research laboratory. His ulterior motive is to alter the reality of anyone and everyone suffering from some kind of negative emotion and have them live in a reality where they are always happy, living free from those negative emotions. You actually get to see his abilities firsthand with Kasumi Yoshizawa, the new girl in the game. Throughout your adventure, you learn about her dead sister, Samire, and that she's been seeing Dr. Maruki ever since her death. But as it turns out, Kasumi has actually been under the influence of Dr. Maruki's powers the entire time that she's been seeing him. Kasumi is actually Sumire, who's supposed to be dead, but she's not because Kasumi is the dead one, and she died after getting hit by a car. Guilt-ridden, Samira wanted to become Kasumi in order to see her dream of becoming a professional gymnast come true. The piece that plays during the palace excursion, Gentle Madman, is one of the best tracks in the game, and one of my personal favorites. So what I wanted to do was just take a look at the music and talk about some things that I've noticed while I was notating it. So let's start off with the key signature of the piece. The key signature has B flat and E flat in it, and we also start off with an octave G in the base of the piano, which informs us that we're in the key of G minor. Now having flats in a key signature gives the piece an overall darker timbre, which is defined as the sound or quality of music. Take a quick listen to the beginning of the piece in G minor, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it so that it's actually in G major, the parallel major. Transitioning from G major to G minor leads to three notes being lowered, the median, or the third, the submedian, the sixth, and the leading tone, the seventh of the scale. By doing this, the piece sounds a lot more depressing and melancholic, whereas G major has a brighter tone because those three notes are being raised. Now, in your typical music theory class, it's going to constantly be reinforced that a major tonality is happy and a minor tonality is sad. And that's what I've told people when I'd tutor them in music theory while I was at college. But it's important to really understand why those tonalities have that overall happy or sad timbre. What is going on with these notes that creates the kind of sound that we're looking for? Adam Neely has an excellent video about this where he talks about the darkness and brightness of pieces in relation to the modes of a scale. And it's such an interesting video. So give it a watch after you finish watching this one though. Thanks. The piano starts off by implementing syncopation, which is basically an interruption in the overall flow of the rhythm. Notice how the first beat of the melody is four 16th notes. Since four 16th notes equal one beat in a measure of four four, this is a perfectly normal way to start the melody. However, it's the dotted eighth notes that follow that help throw off the flow of the piece. When we add a dot next to a note, we are extending it by half that note's duration. So for example, in 4-4, four, four, a quarter note is considered one beat long. Adding a dot would add half of that duration to the note, making a dotted quarter note a beat and a half long. 
When we put a dot next to an eighth note in 4-4, however, we're holding that note out for three quarters of a beat, since an eighth note is counted as half of one beat in 4-4, so it feels very uneven. Listen to the melody with a metronome, and notice how none of the dotted eighth notes really line up with the click, aside from the first dotted eighth note coming in on beat two. You hear how a lot of those notes are always coming in before or after the click? Incorporating syncopation into a piece is what makes it more interesting to listen to. Sticking to normal rhythms for the entire duration of a song will grow repetitive and eventually boring to a listener. Now in the next section of the piece, it takes a bit of a breather with the syncopation. It still incorporates rhythms not on the beat, but it doesn't do it as much as the main melody. To me, it has more of a calm and serene feel, almost as if a patient is slowly calming down while in the middle of a session with Maruki. We're still in G minor here, but it has a much warmer feeling to it than the main melody, which is mainly helped by bringing the E note up a half step, making it an E natural in measure 12. Now let's talk about my favorite part of the piece, which is the bass solo, and this comes in right around the halfway point of the piece. One thing that I love is the relationship between the bass and the piano. The piece begins with this ascending motion close to a G minor scale, with some notes going up and down in a zigzag kind of motion. However, once the bass comes in, the melody in the piano actually becomes a part of the accompaniment. By doing this, these two lines are creating a counterpoint, which is when two or more parts are independent of each other, but still harmonically related. They even maintain similar motions while being played. Notice how the melody of the piano is primarily going in an upward motion for the first beat, and then, as I said before, going down in a zigzag kind of motion. The first half of the bass line does something very similar, where it rises upward, but then goes slightly downward. This creates similar motion, where two parts are moving in the same direction at the same time, but using different intervals. However, the second half of the bass solo does the exact opposite. It starts off pretty high for a bass, and then goes in a downward motion for the remainder of the solo. This contrast between the mainly downward motion of the bass line and the mountain-like motion of the piano hereby creates a contrary motion. These motions going on throughout the piece can actually kind of symbolize the highs and lows of Dr. Maruki's life. Think about this. The college that he went to decided to fully fund his research on cognitive science. That's great, but then they decided to stop due to a lack of concrete evidence. His fiancée lost her parents and suffered from PTSD because of it, and then he discovers that he has the power to change her reality, which he does for her sake, thereby destroying his potential engagement and relationship. He even awakens to Azathoth, his persona. And finally, he discovers that he has his own palace, where he began to conduct research on helping people. Joker and the Phantom Thieves come in and ruin all of his progress and his dreams of making a reality where everybody can be happy. It's tragic that all of this has happened to him relatively recently in the game. The piano and bass when it enters are accompanied by a choir singing a somewhat cultish-like chant, which I think is actually a really wonderful touch given how many followers and patients Maruki's had because of his motivation to give everybody a positive and happy reality. Notice how when you're exploring the palace, all of the patients have these artificial smiles on their face due to the treatment they received. It's really creepy. <laughs> The choir is singing a perfect fourth interval between D as the low note and G as the higher note. They never change these notes throughout the entire piece, which helps create a specific time of contrapuntal motion with the piano and even the bass when it comes in later on. This is called oblique motion, 
which is achieved by having one part go in an upward or downward motion, while another part stays stationary on one or two notes. Now this next thing might be just me overlooking things, but one thing that I found really interesting was the fact that the interval that the choir sings is a perfect fourth. Now, I didn't explain this before, but an interval is the distance between two notes. And when I was learning about them in my high school theory classes, my teacher had us remember songs that certain intervals were found in. So a minor second interval would be the Jaws theme, a major sixth would be the NBC theme, and a perfect fourth would be Here Comes the Bride. Now, this again might just be an overanalyzation of an interval found in a secret palace for an RPG, but as I was saying before, Dr. Maruki had a girlfriend named Rumi, and he was planning on proposing to her, but tragedy struck Rumi when her parents were murdered. She began to suffer from PTSD, and it was during this time that Maruki learned about his powers to alter reality. He changed Rumi's reality, and from that, Rumi didn't remember him at all. And that was when the relationship was broken off, completely unbeknownst to her. Even while traversing the palace, you eventually come across this rapture-esque area with statues of Rumi, showing that he really hasn't gotten over everything that's happened with her. And this is backed up further by his treasure actually being the newspaper article about Rumi's parents. This whole event is what drove him to want to help people be happy, albeit not in the best of ways. However, I like to think that the inclusion of the choir singing this perfect fourth interval symbolizes what Maruki truly wanted, and what his life could have led to if none of this had ever happened, living a happy life somewhere married to Rumi. Now, perfect fourth intervals are actually a really weird interval, especially in this case, because it doesn't signify any kind of change in tonality. The notes that create a perfect fourth are the tonic, which are the first and eighth scale degrees, and the dominant, which is the fifth scale degree, but it's just restructured so that the dominant is the lowest note. Now, it might seem like it only adds to the melancholic feel of the piece, but that's what makes that interval so special. That perfect fourth gives the piece more sentimental value and really portrays the heartbreak that we're supposed to feel for Maruki. The title of the piece is very fitting too, and it's mainly due to the irony between the words gentle and madman. This song being in a minor key helps justify the madman part of the idea, as well as Maruki kind of seeing himself as a god or a messiah. But notice how soft and non-dynamic the song is. If you listen to palace themes like Shido's Palace or Kanashiro's, there's some parts of the song that really stand out over the others. Whether it be adding in certain instrumentation, or just building up to a certain part of the song. Even when the bass part comes in during the piece, it never loses that soft and gentle feel as the title puts it. This piece really is one of the best songs in a game with an already phenomenal soundtrack. From the title being very fitting, to the theory behind it all, and even the potential attention to detail that could have been implemented with that perfect fourth interval. It's such a great song that I had an absolute blast notating and analyzing. If you'd actually like to see my full notation of it, I'm going to leave the link to my MuseScore profile in the description so you can check it out if you want. But if you also want to see more music-based videos, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Alright? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.